The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said there are two characteristics which no Muslim acquires except that he will enter into paradise. They are easy to do, but the people who do them are few. At the end of every prayer, he should say, Subhanallah, ten times. Subhanallah, 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 ten times. And then he should say, Allahu Akbar, ten times. And then he should say, Alhamdulillah, ten times. And the Sahaba said, I saw the Messenger of Allah counting them on his hand. He saw the Messenger of Allah counting them on his hand. That is 150 after all prayers of the day on the tongue and 1,500 on the scale. And when he goes to bed at night, let him glorify Allah and praise him and extol him 100 times. That will be 100 on the tongue and 1,000 on the scale, collected by Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah wa Hassanahu Shaykh al-Albani. This is such an easy thing, 10. But look at that, he said he did it on his hand. Unfortunately, we have been tried with some of the newly invented things that technology has to be responsible for. And that is, I see the people sometimes making the test be with this thing, you press, you press a button and it counts the times. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahaba said that he did it with his finger. And we know that on Yom Al-Qiyamah, our limbs, our body parts, our tongues will testify against us. So why not let our hands acknowledge for us that we made the tasbih, the takbir, the tamheed with them. My brothers and sisters, carrying on. Dying today, pride free and debt free. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man faraqa ruhu jasada. Man faraqa ruhu jasada. That whoever dies, okay, and he is free of three. He is free of three. He is free of kibr, of pride, arrogance. And arrogance isn't necessarily only restricted to being haughty with your nose stuck up and your chest poked out. No, arrogance is also rejecting the truth. Arrogance is also rejecting the truth when it comes to you. Free of gulul, and free of debt, then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Dakhal al Jannah. Avoid backbiting, tail carrying, slander, cursing, and haram sexual relations. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man waqahu Allahu sharra ma bayna lahyehi wa sharra ma bayna rijlehi, Dakhal al Jannah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whomever protects against the evil of what is between his jaws and the evil of what is between his legs shall enter into Jannah. Another way to enter into Jannah, my brothers and sisters, is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever persists in praying 12 rakats each day and night will enter into paradise. Four before Thor and two after. Two rakats after Maghrib, two rakats after Isha, and two rakats before Fajr. Two rakats before Fajr. Choose one of these. I'm mentioning a list here, but choose one that you can regularly practice. Don't burn yourself out, because unfortunately that is what happens. As when Ramadan comes in, the first day of Ramadan, the first night, the first Fajr of Ramadan, there's no entrance. And this goes on sometimes for some people five days, and then they burn out. Then they only catch one, one Salah in the Masjid, maybe two. And some people, maybe it goes on for ten. And fortunately, some people, at the end of the last ten days, they're able to come back and finish off the way that they started. 
Do righteous deeds throughout your day. You never know when your soul is going to depart from our bodies. Whoever says, La ilaha illallah, seeking the countenance of Allah, thereby, and that is the last of his deeds, will enter into paradise. Whoever fasts a day desiring Allah's reward, and the last of his deeds of that day will be that he fasted, he will enter into Jannah. Whoever gives charity sincerely, seeking to earn Allah's pleasure, and that is the last of his deeds, will enter into Jannah. Collected by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he advised us to maintain a sunan of Salatul Dhuhr. He said, Man salla qabla dhuhri arba'in wa ba'daha arba'in harramahullahu ala nar. That whoever prays for before dhuhr and for after, then Allah has made the fire prohibited for him to burn. Has made prohibited for him to burn. Throughout the day, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah and seek refuge in him. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith collected on Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, he said, Man sa'alallaha jannata thalatha marratin Whoever asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah three times. فَقَالَ جَنَّةُ Jannah says, Allahumma adkhalahu jannata. Allah, O oh Allah, enter him into Jannah. وَمَنِ اسْتِجَارَ مِن نَارِ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتٍ قَالَتْ نَارُ اللَّهُمَ أَجَرَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ أَقْرَجَهُ وَتِرْمِذِي فِي جَامِعِهِ وَصَحَهُ وَتِرْمِذِي The Prophet Muhammad said, whoever asks Allah for Jannah three times, Allahumma inni asalaka Jannah, Allahumma inni asalaka Jannah, Allahumma inni asalaka Jannah. I said it in less than a minute. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-nar. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-nar. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-nar. I said it in less than, less than a minute. Both. Jannah just said, insha'Allah, enter me into Jannah. And the hellfire just said, save me from it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the hellfire. Ameen. Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr, we all know the superiority of Laylatul Qadr. Everyone, they rush out. Some thinks it's the 27th, some thinks it's the 24th, the 23rd, or whatever. But what is important is that in Laylatul Qadr, there is a reward. And there is a hadith collected on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr. He said, Man salla arba'in ba'd al isha. Whoever prays for after isha is like praying for raka during Laylatul Qadr, collected in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shaiba. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, she said that whoever prays for raka after Isha is similar to praying for raka during Laylatul Qadr. Four raka after Isha. Can we maintain that? Or are we going to wait till later till Qadr for next Ramadan? No, we can start tonight. Go home today. Make the four tonight before you go to bed. Make the four tonight before you go to bed. Now, we know that the sunnah of salah, as the Prophet Muhammad said, as salatul laylul wa nahara muthna, 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 that the prayer of the day and the night are two raka, two raka, two raka. However, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala, and he has said that this prayer, these four rakat after Isha, are prayed similarly to the way we pray Salatul Dhuhr. So, this hadith, it has the status of what we call Hukum Marfu'. It is a hadith that is attributed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because here the two Sahaba, they're speaking about an affair that is unknown. How about having our sins forgiving while sleeping? Before we go to bed at night, Make wudu. Make wudu. And then go to sleep. The Prophet Muhammad said, Purify these bodies, may Allah purify you. For there is no servant who spends the night in a state of purification, except an angel spends the night with him in the garment which is closest to his body. And he does not turn over at the time during the night, except the angel said, Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, forgive your servant. 
for he went to sleep in a state of purification, collected by Imam Tabarani in his Mu'ajim al-Kabir. After Salatul Fajr, Dhuhr, the five daily Salah, read Ayatul Kursi. Read Ayatul Kursi. As the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said, Man kara al ayatul kursi, fi dubra kullu salatin, maktubatin, lam yam na'ahu min dukhul al jannati, illa an yamut. Collected by Imam al Nasa'i and al Kubra. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says, Whoever reads ayatul kursi at the end of the obligatory prayers, that nothing will prevent him from entering into Jannah except death. Except death. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man qara'a qul huwa Allahu ahad. Ten times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build for him a house in Jannah. Now these simple deeds that I mentioned today are so easy that we can practice every day in our lives. Take one. And as you become regularly accustomed to practice in this, choose another. Don't burn yourself out. The religion of Islam is an easy religion. Our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is al ghafur rahim Constantly remember that. But at the same time, huwa shadeed al-iqab, that he is also severe in his punishment. So I remind myself today, and we must remind you, my brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, that we need to be constantly, we need to be diligently striving for the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in the end, we're going to find out it was only Allah Azza wa Jal who kept his promise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us.